As a photographer, I love the creative process, but all too often, photographers fall flat on their digital workflow. And this includes color management. My name is Sal Sincata, and I'm a professional wedding and portrait photographer. That's not what it looked like when I shot it. If you have ever said or thought those words, guess what? You have a color management problem. As a creative, you have to ask yourself the obvious question. How important is it for the final image to look and feel the way it was when you saw it with your own two eyes? How important is it to get color right? Well, the answer should be extremely important. If not, why bother buying all that fancy and expensive equipment? You might as well show up with your phone and call it a day. Of course not, that's a ridiculous answer. Whether you're delivering a final product that is print or digital, color and tonal range are extremely important to ensuring your final images look the way they did when they were captured. Your color should be consistent. Your images should have punch with a crisp tonal range. Your highlights and shadows should be perfect and consistent from shot to shot and camera to camera. If you're a wedding photographer who works with a second shooter, rarely do your images match from camera to camera. This is why you are not properly calibrated. What if I told you, no better yet, what if I showed you how easy data color has made it for you to consistently get accurate color and exposure from shot to shot? And best of all, it will significantly improve your post-production workflow. All right, so we are here on location, and as you can see, even on video, uh, we've got a ton of green grass, green trees, leaves. What's that gonna do to color? It's gonna be a nightmare for color. It's gonna create all sorts of green cast in your shadows and your highlights. So if you wanna get white balance right, you're gonna struggle in a scene like this, not to mention she's got a red uh, shirt, which is also going to create some problems in post-production, right? So here's the thing, I don't want you to believe that this is difficult. It is super simple to do. It will take you less than 10 seconds to take this shot uh, using the Spider Checker 24 uh, and be spot on with color every single time. You'll spend more time in post-production if you don't do it right here in the field. So stop convincing yourself it can't be done. Let's do it. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. And by the way, this is a tough shot for a camera uh, to pick up. As you're seeing and looking behind me, Right? We've got exposure problems where we've got brightness behind her. Uh, we've got cast and shadow coming down on her face. And so this is where this tool, spend 10 seconds or less in the field doing it. It is gonna save you tons of time, hours of time uh, back in post-production. And I don't wanna spend all that time in post-production when within a couple of clicks, I can get it right. So let me show you how it's done. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Spider Checker 24. And with the Spider software in Lightroom or Photoshop, we're gonna create a profile that can be applied to the images we shot in this scene. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to use that once we get back to the studio. But it's important that we shoot the card with the exact same lighting conditions. That's what we're gonna uh, do here. So I'm gonna have Olivia hold it up uh, to her right there, and I'm gonna get a tighter shot. I could take it from here, but I wanna get in close so that I can isolate this and it'll make more sense in post-production. So I'm gonna get right up on he in here uh, to take the shot. This is what's in focus. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to take it two ways. I'm going to take it vertical and horizontal. Okay. And what that chart is going to end up doing is giving me, uh, for post-production, is giving me the color chart uh, that we can now get all the colors in this scene uh, perfect. Now, let's just say you want to focus on your exposure, your white balance, and your black and white levels. The Spider Cube is the answer. It's lightweight, it's portable, and the same thing. You just take one shot, and then in post-production, you're gonna get your black levels correct. So if you like that kind of crunchy, really dark black, but not losing the details, this is the way to do it. So I'm gonna take another test shot so that we have both in post-production and then I'll show you how to use it. Okay, and that's it. It really is that simple. So you get those two shots and you've got everything you need to get perfect color, perfect exposure, and perfect black and white levels. And this is what's gonna make your post-production easy. So. It's that simple, it's 10 seconds or less. Now, let's actually get to making some great images here. All right, so we're back at the studio, and the first thing I have to do before I get started is actually calibrate my monitor. Think about it. What good is it if we calibrate our cameras, our printers, our lab, but we don't calibrate our monitors? Colors will never look right. Have you ever looked at your image on a mobile device versus a monitor versus a laptop? They never look the same, do they? That's because they're not calibrated. 
Now, before you go down the path of, what about our clients, Al? Their monitors aren't calibrated. Correct, but they're also not the ones editing the images. So you need to be the one to ensure your entire workflow is calibrated. You are also the one who'll be sending it off to print. These images could be used in a magazine, they could be used in billboards, they can be used in direct mail pieces. Ultimately, you are the one who has to ensure that these things are calibrated because guess what? Those locations are also calibrated. I use the Spider X Elite. The process is simple and it ensures that my monitor is calibrated and true to color. All right, so now that we have the images in Lightroom, I've selected uh, four images, right? So we have one of her holding the chart, uh, one holding the cube, uh, and then two images that I like. And what you should quickly be able to see is that there is a green color cast, just like I told you there would be from all the grass and the, um, you know, and the tree leaves and the sunlight leaking through. And so we wanna get all our colors correct, that red, uh, the blues, we really wanna do that. And so this is where uh, the Spider Checker 24 really comes into play. So here's our chart. First thing we're gonna do is crop this. So we wanna focus on uh, just the uh, checker. So we crop in here, right? This is, you're gonna see how easy this is. Uh, to get going. All right, so we crop that. Now we've got our color palette here. And first thing we're gonna do is get white balance correct. And so we're gonna click here and this is our, uh, you know, part of the gray card we wanna click in. So that's gonna make the adjustment. You could already see the changes to the colors. Uh, and then we've got two other um, squares here we need to contend with. We've got our white, which needs to be 96%. And in the top right hand corner, you'll see up here, uh, you'll see the exposure and shadow readings um, pop up. So you can see we're 95.2% here. Uh, so we're gonna lift exposure just a little bit. Now let's see where we're at, 96.4, okay. And down here, we want this to actually be at four, uh, about 4% 4 and it's reading 9.2. So now we're gonna grab the black slider and slide this down a little bit, right? And this is helping us get our tonal range right, right, our contrast. So let's pull this down a little bit more. So here we're at 2.2, I've gone too far. 4.4, 96 flat. So we're in a good spot right now. So now what we're gonna do is uh, go to photo, edit in, spider checker editing. So we are sending it over to, to the software, spider checker software with the Lightroom adjustments to uh, create a custom profile for us that we'll be able to apply uh, to all those images. And you can see what it's doing. It's giving you all these little squares, which it knows where its colors are and what red should look like, green should look like, and it's making those adjustments. And so uh, we're gonna save it to Lightroom, the mode, uh, right, color metric. Uh, we're gonna save this calibration and we'll call it Olivia Park. Save that, perfect. Now, the only drawback is, and it's not really a drawback, you just have to understand how Lightroom works. Uh, that profile has not been imported into Lightroom yet. So we actually have to uh, quit uh, Lightroom. Skip the backup. And once we relaunch Lightroom, uh, that profile will actually automatically be imported and we'll start applying it to our images and that will remove that color cast automatically. And so we can see we're in the develop preset and automatically we're getting that notification from Lightroom uh, that it's been imported. So as we scroll down here now, uh, to the color profile, we see the Olivia Park uh, custom preset. So now what we wanna do is go to the images that we pre-selected. And if we go into develop mode and apply that user preset, you can see on off uh, that adjustment that's been made to give us this really uh, good baseline image. Now from here, right, you can start, so the baseline has been added to the image. It's kind of zeroed everything out. Now, right, it's almost like a flat image. We can now start adjusting uh, our exposure, our contrast, right, and start making some normal adjustments that we might make uh, to an image to get this to, to look right. We can lift our shadows, and now you're starting to get more of a truer image uh, by applying that profile. So uh, I'm hoping that makes sense on how we've done that. All right, so once you start editing the image and get it close to the way you look, remember, we're still in Lightroom. Now, if you wanna see side by side to really get a sense of what these look like, uh, you can really see the difference between the original image on the left uh, and the neutralized image on the right. So we've removed that color cast. Uh, you can see it in her face significantly. 
uh, from the left to the right. Uh, now remember, this hasn't been retouched, hasn't been sent into Photoshop. We are just getting our colors right uh, and calibrated from our monitor to from our camera, monitor, and then ultimately to what will print. So let's apply the Olivia Park preset to her. Uh, and what you're gonna see is immediately uh, there's a shift in the color. So we'll look side by side and you're seeing uh, on the left, uh, which was what was shot before the preset was applied and what was shot after. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking the one on the left looks more vibrant, uh, looks more colorful, and you'd be correct. But remember, all we have done is zeroed out color at this point. So we're getting colors. Look at reds, look at skin tones. Now, when we finalize this image, you're gonna see the biggest difference. So now, you go into your normal editing, right? You're gonna adjust a little bit of your uh, maybe blacks if you want it to be a little bit warmer, perhaps. Uh, a little bit brighter. Uh, so you're gonna still make those micro adjustments, but what you know is happening here is you now have uh, a solid looking image uh, that where the colors are going to be consistent, but the skin is the most important part. Uh, we don't want all that green, right, in the skin. That becomes the most important part here is to make sure the skin tones uh, do in fact look right. You should always be editing uh, for skin. That's usually uh, the rule of thumb uh, for me. So now that we've just adjusted a few of the dials here, and I suppose we can add a little bit of vibrance if we want to get a little bit more of that green back in the tree, uh, you'll notice as we go side by side now, uh, there really is a significant difference between the image on the left uh, and the image on the right, especially in the green. And I don't know if you you know, really start trying to pay attention. Look at the neutrality of the skin. Uh, the lack of green cast in the skin on the right. That to me is is the most important thing. I don't, that doesn't look pleasing in a print. Also notice the difference in her blouse, the, the vibrancy of that color. That's really coming out because of the color checker and the adjustment to all the colors in the scene. And so now that we're looking at it that way, right? And we go back to this image, you start understanding and appreciating what's been done to it. Uh, well, the simplicity of what's been done to it. Colors now look good and there will be consistency throughout. So what I'm seeing on my monitor, what I saw when I was there on the scene, and what I'm going to uh, see after edit and going to print are going to be very, very consistent. So if you've ever been frustrated uh, by your print not looking the way it looked on your monitor, this is the reason why. Or if you can't get skin tones right, this is also the reason why. But so now let's just say you, you didn't want to use the Spider Checker 24. Uh, this is where the, the um, Gator Color Cube really comes into play. So let's try it on another image. So for here, uh, right, this is a multi-step process, but we don't have to go out and create a profile. So I just had Olivia hold this up, uh, and I'm now going to go out here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get white balance correct. So I'm gonna go out here, click on that, okay? So white balance was adjusted, tint was adjusted. Um, I'm going to adjust exposure, but I'm going to hit my J key uh, to turn on my right my clipping so I can see here when things are getting clipped. So I'm gonna lift exposure a little bit here. I can see some highlights in the top left getting clipped, uh, and this looks about right. The next piece is this little black uh, circle here. That's kind of our black point. So I'm gonna pull down on the black, and you can see once that goes uh, fully black, that's about where I want that uh, right there. Uh, exposure looks good. I don't want to clip right about there. So everything's looking the way I want. And the other piece here is to look at this ball, make sure you're not clipping anything there. So now once that I've gotten gotten my white balance and tonal range uh, right, turn, uh, turn off the clipping mask. Now what I can do is we're going to go to and apply it to this image. So we're going to take that, sync up our settings. And now when we look at this image, uh, we can see that we have now gotten rid of that green cast. It's a warmer image, right? This is that season to taste. So if you want that to be a little bit cooler or neutral, see, I tend to like my colors a little bit more neutral. I, I, I know a lot of you might like it really, really warm. And depending on how you're uh, viewing this right now, right? If you're viewing it on the internet and your monitor is not calibrated, right? Things are going to look and feel a little squirrely. But what I'm trying to tell you is I like more of a neutral color and this is where we're at right now, right? So I'm, uh, I like this to be more neutral. And now if I really want to, I can come back in here and just you know, adjust these dials just a little bit. 
But now that we are dialed in, this could be synced across all your images. And if we look at the before and after again on this, right, we can really see the difference in the skin. It's, it's lacking that green. Uh, now you're not gonna get the same color adjustment, right, in her shirt, because that's what the Spider Checker 24 is for. This, the, the cube is really meant for your contrast, your tonal range. Uh, and exposure, and that's what that's meant for, and we've got it. So this, you would have to go in and start adjusting luminance value, saturation, and hue. This is why I like the Spider Checker 24, or using them in combination with one another uh, to, to get the perfect shot. Now, mind you, I'm taking a lot longer to do this uh, because I'm walking you through it, but at the end of the day, we now have a, an image that's straight out of camera. It hasn't gone into Photoshop. Uh, I've got good tonal range. Right, we can look at our histogram up here. We've got a nice balance of highlights, shadow detail. We're not clipping anything. Well, I take that back, right? We've got some shadow under her hair. I'm gonna be okay with uh, that being going into pure black. Uh, but now we've got a very strong image. That's pretty much uh, what I saw in the field. We didn't use any flash on this. Uh, this was all shot with natural light. So I'm hoping that explains the process a little bit more and how simple it is now to sync this across uh, multiple images. So again, if we look at the two images we chose to edit, uh, right, one on the left is a little more neutral. Uh, the one on the right, I gave you a little bit more warmth to that. But again, you're seeing how quickly and easy it is uh, to get to uh, good, clean skin tones, no green cast in her skin. Uh, and that's the most important part. All right, everyone. So that's it. I hope you can see how quick and easy it is to implement a color management workflow and how easy it is to get consistent results on any photo shoot.